Welcome back, and in this video we're going to be covering sets in Java. Now sets are quite similar to the array lists that we covered in the last video in that they're one of the Java collection types. However, where they differ is that you can only store unique elements within our sets. So for example, if I try to put two twos into a set, then it would only actually store one of those, and the second would overwrite the first. So let's go straight into an example, and what we're going to do is actually use hash sets as our example. And so I start off by writing set, and then quite similar to the array list in the last video, in here I put the type of the object I'm working with. And so don't forget, if you're using your primitive types, then you would use their corresponding wrapper class. So for example here, if I put an int, that wouldn't work. I'd actually have to put an integer. I then set the name of the set that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to call this one my nums. And then I make that equal to a new hash set. And then if you notice here, I've got an error, which says it cannot infer the arguments. And also, if you look here, we have an error saying it cannot resolve the symbol set. And that's because we have to import set into our Java class. So if you look at the top here, you would have noticed that it imported a hash set whilst I was writing, but sometimes it doesn't do all of them. And so we have to manually import it. And the way we can do that is simply by hit, clicking over it and hitting Alt and then Enter. And then we'll get the option to import the class. Another thing you could do is also go to this red light bulb that comes up. And if you click down, or if you click on this down arrow, you will get the option to import a class. So I'm going to do that. And then as you can see up here, the Java set class has been imported and all my errors are gone because Java now knows what it's working with. And so now let's look at putting some numbers into our set. And this isn't actually too bad. It's quite similar to the array lists that we were looking in in the last video where we simply write the name of the set, so my nums, and then I do a dot add and I just put the number in. So I'm going to start off with a 5. And then I'm going to do a couple more. So my nums dot add 3. And then my nums, whoops, my nums dot add, say, 1. And a really important thing to note is in a set, unlike the array list, the items, your items aren't actually stored in order. So for example, I could have this 5, a 3, and a 1 but I wouldn't actually be able to reference individual elements. And if I was to print this out, it would come out in a different order. And that's because here it's a hash set. And so what actually happens is each of the numbers goes through a hashing function. And I'll give them a sort of unique sort of key, which means that each item in the set is unique, similar to how every key is unique to a lock. We'll ignore the fact that you can always get a key cut. That doesn't apply in this instance. And another thing we can do is since we can't actually access individual elements within our set, we can actually check if a set contains an element. And the way we do that is we can actually do my nums dot contains. And then what that'll do is we simply just throw in the number. So say I wanted to check my nums contain, say, six. Then we know it doesn't, and so it would print a false. But if I try it with, say, a 1, then we would expect to get a true because 1 is in our set, seeing as we've just added it here. So I'm going to run that. And if you look, we'll get a false corresponding to this statement, where it's checking if 6 is in the set, and a true for this one, where it's asking if 1 is in the set. And now something else that we'll probably have to do quite often is check the size of our set. And so that's actually not too hard as well. It's quite similar to how we do the other methods. And what we would do is just do my nums, so the name of our set, dot, and then size. And so if I was to run that, and I'm just going to comment these lines out for first, then we can see that we get three, because we have three elements in the set. And so this is quite similar to how we actually check the size for an array list. And just like an array list, the way we remove items is by doing my nums dot remove, and then we simply just put whatever we want to remove in. So I'm going to put in a three, and that will take three out from the list. 
And so then if I get my size and I check it again after I remove the elements, well, it should go from three to two. And as we can see, it does that. And what if I just wanted to clear the whole list? And so that's exactly the same as we did with an array list. So my nums dot clear, and then I'm just going to print that out again. So I'll check the size. And if we look, it should go to zero. And now, if you notice, we didn't actually look at printing the individual elements. And that's because you can't access them, as I mentioned before. However, we still can iterate through our list and print them. And a common way we will do that is through what's known as an enhanced for loop, which is something we're going to cover after we finish off the collections subtopic within this series. And so that's a brief overview of the functions that we have in sets and a hash set, with a couple more that you can explore for yourself simply by just hitting the name of your set and then doing a dot and seeing the list of functions that comes up, quite similar to this. And as you can see, we have the clear, remove, contains, all of these to try out. And I def definitely recommend playing around with them because you can actually do some quite cool stuff, like converting your set to an array. And that's one way you could, um, say, access a specific element. And now before we finish, we're just going to cover one last part, which is actually how we initialize our set. And so if you notice here, we've left these brackets empty. But like an array list, we can actually define the initial size of our set. So I could put in a 5 here, and it will have an initial capacity of 5 as we see come up. And so it's important to note that it's not actually restricted to this size. And so I could add more than 5 elements, and it would actually be all right. It would grow as, we, as it needs to. And so that leads us on to a second parameter that we can set, which is known as the load factor which is a measure of how full the hash set can get before it actually increases. And so this is a number between 0 and 1. And then obviously, because those involve decimal numbers, uh, for Java, they actually use the float data type. So I'm just going to cast it so Java knows it's a float. And then I can put any number I want between 0 and 1. Usually, you'd recommend 0.75 is the most efficient. And so what, what will happen is if I were to, say, change this to 100, then as soon as it hits 75, my hash set size will automatically increase. And that's because it's calculated by doing the total size of the set multiplied by the float value. And as long as the number of elements is less than this, then the hash set will stay the same. As soon as the number of elements becomes bigger than this, it will rehash and give us a bigger set. And so that's an overview of hash set in Java. And as per usual, I'll post all the code from this video in my Git repository, which will be linked in the description below. Other than that, I hope you found my content useful. And please do check out my channel for more videos on Java tutorials.